In this video we're going to go into all the technical details of how you might build this folding step. Before I started I made a rough mock-up just so I'd get a bit of an idea of how it functioned, what, what was critical, what, what could go wrong and whether it would be strong enough and I'm really glad I did that because it gave me the confidence to take my time and do a good job of the finer, final um, product. So what thickness of plywood do we need? How thin can we go? You know, is 12 mil okay? Or do we need to go to something heavier, like a piece of 16 mil? Obviously the thinner the better, it's lighter, saves more space, it's more slim against the wall, but you don't want it breaking. Okay, well let's put a bit of 12 mil ply to the test. The same width and the same spacing, 400 millimeters, is to see how strong it is. Well, I'm about 80 kilos, a little less hopefully on a good day, um, but that is pretty good. I mean, I'm deliberately putting a lot of extra weight on it and it's nowhere near breaking. Let's spread it out a bit more, very much worse situation at 550 millimeters spacing yeah now now we're getting borderline I would not be happy with that so probably if you're over a hundred kilos you might want to consider the next thickness up above 12 millimeters but I think that's fine for uh, a load of around 80 kilos or less Remember to have the plywood grain running lengthways because that's the outer surface that's in tension. It'll be very much weaker if it's crossways. No different on the other side. Oh, it's all ready to bolt in now once the uh, glue has fully set. Um, let's just have a look at the dimensions if you want to build one yourself. This is a single step design, but it could also be built with a double step. I think it's easier if you reasonably fit just to have a single step. It's less obtrusive, less uh, bulky. But anyway, this is what we chose. Um, so the dimensions, you may want to change them, um, but I made them 430 wide, 350 high, and 220 deep. If you're interested in printing that, just pause your screen, take a screenshot and print it off. Here's the four panels before I paint them and screw it together. They're just four rectangles of uh, half inch or 12 millimeter ply. Um, the two side panels are the same length and the two top and bottom panels are the same length. Um, depending on the construction of your hinges, if you're making them, um, if the uh, pivot portion is proud like that, you might want to router or recess uh, to accommodate that proud portion. I don't know how important that is. The hinges will sit slightly squint if you don't do that. You can see there it's quite a highly stressed assembly so I think it's important to build it as carefully as you can I'm going to put epoxy glue in the holes when I screw it together and this will make it much stronger but it would be very unlikely to work loose the only downside with that is it may be virtually impossible to dismantle it so I've assembled it and tested it um, in this state first so that I know it'll be fine when it's finally epoxied together. Before I made the mock-up, I thought long and hard about what sort of proportion uh, wood and hinges would be needed to take the weight. Um, I eventually decided that it wants to be as light as possible and as slim line as possible. I thought probably half inch or 12 millimeter thick five ply Five ply, six ply, five ply I think would be strong enough um, and the hinges well I needed eight of them so I wasn't going to buy expensive 
sort of high grade cabinet making hinges. These are basic hinges, probably Chinese hinges worth around about two or three New Zealand dollars. So they'd only be about a dollar US. Um, so the length of those hinges is um, 85 millimeters and the thickness of the sheet metal they're made out of is about 1.7. It looks like they are strong enough um, and that's quite a cost effective way um, to construct it lightweight, simple and yet strong enough. The main screws that hold it all together that go through the hinges and into the half inch or 12 millimeter ply are pretty critical. You want to get really good engagement because they're taking a lot of load. And you know, I couldn't find the right length countersunk screws in the hardware store. So I ended up by buying some that were a little longer. It's easy enough to do. You can use one screw to cut the thread and then grind the rest off just in a on a bench grinder or a linisher um, to the right length and that way you can get the absolute maximum depth of penetration and the, the right strength of screw without worrying about buying the perfect product because remember the first few millimeters of the pointed end are really wasted in this situation and you might as well grind it off and get a bit more length of full thread engagement. Right, well that's it all screwed together and weighted down so the epoxy can set. I found it worked well to put the epoxy inside the screw holes with a toothpick and then touch the screw in the epoxy and screw it together. Um, make sure you don't use five minute epoxy because it'll take you longer than that to put it together. Uh, if you've got as many screws as I have here, because there's eight, eight hinges, um, and then halfway through it will start going off, you'll have a disaster on your hands. So this is um, Super Strength, Sally Super Strength Araldite, it's a one to two hour setting time. So that's given me enough time to fully assemble it and check that it's operating um, before the epoxy starts to go off. Well, about 20 hours later, the epoxy on the screws has well and truly set. It won't have reached its maximum strength yet, but it's got pretty strong. And interestingly, I've pulled out one of the screws on a hinge position that isn't highly stressed. This is the side against the wall. And the uh, vertical piece goes all the way down to the floor. And the screw will come out okay with a square drive. It's a little bit tighter than normal but it does come out but I think it's leaving behind a nicely formed plastic epoxy thread inside the hole so it's good to know it can be removed. Just a little point to note if you are grinding the end of the screw to optimize the length or utilize screws of a different length make sure you grind a little chamfer on the corner and don't have a burr there. You, you'll find there'll be a burr there if you grind it off um, and that burr could easily damage the inside of your wooden thread. Um, so grind a little chamfer there after you've ground it off to length. You won't be able to file it on many screws because they are hardened. A grinding wheel or a liner shaft is even better. And so that I know I get the same hinges in the same positions um, when I reassemble it, I've just numbered them 1 through to 8 so they can be all replaced in the same place because if these are cheap hinges it may be that the holes are not in the same place relative to the hinge body so that if you mix the hinges up it could mean that the final assembly is out of alignment and so I'm going to be replacing the hinges back in the same position that they were in to try and cut down on time, I'm just giving it um, a, a basic coat of a single coat on the inside of an acrylic multi-purpose paint and uh, then I'll assemble it and give the outside two coats. This is a, a test pot, you know, you can get it mixed up according to a, your color swatch of the particular color you want to match inside your camper van motorhome. Um, and so I'm just putting on one coat on the inside, then I'll assemble it, then I'll put on two coats on the outside. 
nothing too flash but that will save me quite a bit of time I ground the hinge position identification numbers into the wood with a little dremel so that after it's painted I don't lose my felt pen mark there's many ways that you could fix it in place um, this is just a little rotating toggle and a slot but you could also buy a little window latch from a hardware store this is very slim line you can see it there just a little plastic t-shape you could also make it out of aluminium or hardwood just rotate it to lock it in place I chose that design because it's compact and quick and easy but there's many other little devices you can buy in a hardware store that would be just as good I'm sure a swinging latch on the side or a pivoting window latch or a spring-loaded little clip type latch for those who are interested in making the retaining knob similar to this design um, if you have access to a lathe you can get a bit of uh, acetyl or nylon rod machine the basic profile out and then just linish that uh, rectangular portion down or you could use a rasp and then get some heavy sandpaper and dress it down to the shape and finish it off with a bit of scotch bright or uh, fine carborundum paper something like that doesn't have to be anything flash again but that's quite a tidy way of retaining the uh, folded assembly I put some aluminium edging on the top plate um, just to make it look a bit smarter add a little bit of strength and give some scuff resistance on that front edge you can buy this aluminium extruded material from a hardware store just for a few dollars and just cut it to length and drill some for example countersink holes um, notice I didn't put a hole right in the middle but spaced it either side you don't really want to put a notch weak point right in its most stressed position putting it to the wall remember that it's not actually load bearing the attachment to the wall because it goes right down to the floor all the same there will be some jarring as you climb on and off it's quite dark down in here I don't know how well we can see but I put three screws in at the top and one in the bottom to minimize the marking of the wall as far as I can ascertain on this motor home the wall is about 12 millimeters thick if I look on the other side I don't think I've drilled through I've gone in about 10 millimeters with some screws and uh, I put some rubber washers at the back uh, just to sort of help um, reduce the chance of damaging the wall and some felt pads on the corner so that they also reduce the chance of marking the wall the only concern I have about the durability of this folding step is its attachment to the wall although it is not really load bearing if we slip or stumble or jar it too much the jolting might eventually loosen the screws um, but I'm not too worried because if the worst comes to the worst I'll just put a screw right through from the other side where the shower is a stainless steel screw with a washer a couple of those will be 10 times stronger than the current system and then I can just paint the head of the screw with white paint or sealant and you'll hardly see it down there in the shower and um, every, every motorhome and camper van situation will be different from this I'm sure so that's uh, something you'll need to think about uh, relative to your build if you're going to build this yourself please let me know how it goes I'd love to hear in the comments uh, also, if you think it's a little bit too tricky for you to build, it's not your thing, um, you could find a local uh, joiner or cabinet maker, send him a link to the email, say have a look at this video and give me a quote to build it for you. could be a nice little project for them when they're quiet. Or you might have a friend or a family member 
who could have a look at the video and build it for you. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel, Refine Design, where I put in various tips and tricks that help you to make life go a little bit more smoothly.